was out nice and early. Um, lucky enough, I had a uh, day off work. Fortunately, when I got up, the wind was a total wrong direction than I thought it was going to be. It was a howling southerly, so I had to change up my plan and went and tried a few different areas. So I found this nice reefy spot here and I thought I'd throw some jigs off it to see what I could pull up. I've just got my spinning outfit which is a 9 foot 2 Veritas, 16 kilos and I've got a 5000 Nasky, got 20 pound braid and 30 pound leader on and I've just got a 40 gram Vex jig that I'm uh, using here. I've got it aimed uh, to the north along this rock ledge here, a lot to do because there's a howling subly, but also just trying to see if there's anything along the edge here. I was out here for a good hour or so, and unfortunately there was just so much seaweed all chopped up in the water, it started becoming out unfishable. When fishing on uh, these reefs, it's really important that you know safety sort of comes first. So you want to make sure you check the conditions. So I'm here at a low tide, and I know that it's going to be a low tide for a fair bit of time. Um, it's actually sort of like one of those neat tides, so it's a sort of safer time to go on top of the reef. This uh, video probably doesn't give it quite justice, but there was quite a lot of swell. Um, obviously, the lower the swell, the, the better, particularly when you start. And um, to be safe. When you do have swell here where the whitewash is coming over, uh, when, the, when the water comes over, try not to walk through it. Just stay still, plant yourself. And particularly when you're walking as well. So for here, I'm packing up and moving along. And the wash comes through. I can't see directly in front of me because of all the whitewash. So I'll wait for it to go clear so I can see where my feet are going to go, just so I don't end up stepping in a hole, snapping my ankle, or taking a tumble. So again, wash comes over, pause. Once I can see, I keep on walking. I'm also walking, rather than having the waves to my back, I'm walking across the reef back towards the shore here, just so I can sort of keep one eye on the ocean just in case something big comes along as well. You really want to have good footwear as well. Don't try and come out here in some you know, and just sort of wing it barefoot. It's, you know, there's lots of sharp, jagged rocks, abalone things, and other sharp things that you can cut your feet on, and you really want to be able to walk across it quickly if you can. So, I decided to have a crack at one of the other sides of the reef, so um, at the location I'm at, you can cast on, I guess, the inside of the reef, where there's a little bit of a channel. So here the water is rushing over the top of the reef into this channel here and there's a nice rock face. And particularly because I've got a southerly wind here, I'm able to cast right along the side of this reef here. So check my drag. Again, you have to pretty tight sort of drag um, because I'm gonna be casting alongside this reef. So I've just gotta be careful. Lovely. Always awesome to get it on the first cast. Gutted. I'd been at it for so long. And I thought because I got it the first cast, I would get one after one after one. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be. I did hook another one and got it right to my feet. But when you've been out there, it is also pretty hard to actually work out how you're going to land the fish too. So after one really frustrating session, I moved to another the next day. Here again, it was very low tide. The wind was a little bit better, but there was bits of exposed reef along this beach and I was just walking along and following the bait which was getting smashed right in front of me. There was lots of uh, bait fish that were getting absolutely smacked everywhere but the tailor were not touching my lures at all. I think what was happening is that the, a lot of these little bait fish that would usually be protected by the reef, the reef was now exposed and waves were crashing right over the top of it. So they were cruising away and along the beach and they were getting smashed. 
here I snagged one, so I'll bring it in and you'll get to see what the bait fish will look like. They were absolutely everywhere. I threw this one out live, but it flung off the hook on the first cast. So after extremely frustrating fish, I was walking back towards uh, the car. And I got a nice hook up. As you can see in the shadow here, I'm carrying another fishing rod and all my gear while casting along the beach here. So I was pretty happy to get this one just before I was about to walk into the dunes. made an absolute meal of it. The beach was actually quite steep because of such a low tide and it just rolled straight back into the ocean. I was pretty gutted. I was using a CID Sprat. Uh, this was I think the 30 gram version was doing really well with this lure recently. There was still quite a lot of weed around so I had a single hook on the back. I was still reeling after two days of casting, walking on beaches and reef and not landing a fish. I was really starting to lose it now. I was rushing, not taking my time, and just as I was trying to pull it up the steep level where the waves were crashing, the fish came straight off. Pretty happy with the hookup ratio though. This lure has been doing me well. So this one I was just going to really take my time. As the waves were crashing right at the edge, I couldn't just pull it up. I just had to wait for each surge and slowly move it up the, up the beach, even for this small tailor. After spending, you know, six hours of fishing across a couple of days or even longer, it was actually a really satisfying fish to catch. Just your run-of-the-mill sort of tailor, but it makes it all worth it somehow. You can do a really good catch and cook with this one too. It was literally caught just before I was packing up, so uh, I walked up the track. Spotted a dugite in the bushes. It's that time of year, so so I've decided to smoke this one. So I usually do 50 grams of salt uh, to a litre. So I'm using 500 mils of water here. So I've got 25 grams of salt, and I've put out the same ratio of sugar to it. I don't usually measure. I usually just guesstimate. I'll usually put a bit of hot water to dissolve the initial salt and uh, sugar and then I'll add in cold water to bring it to room temperature. Even chuck a few ice blocks to get it to go a bit quicker. 
I'll then add some fennel seeds and some peppercorns and I'll let that sit for about five hours. I then rinse it out under the tap, so rinse off all the solution and then I'll put the fillets in the head in the fridge to sort of dry out a little bit. I'm smoking them in uh, Weber Go Anywhere, so just indirect heat and using some applewood chips. So I've got the vents open underneath the fire and then on top where the fish are so it brings the smoke across. It doesn't need long, probably about 30 to 40 minutes here and I've smoked the fish head because the fish head is going to add a lot of flavour to the chicken stock that I'm going to use for the base of the arancinis. So that just puts a really nice smoky flavour into the chicken stock and I'm going to stir that into some sautéed diced onions and, um, and about a cup or I think it was a cup and a half of arborio rice and I'll slowly ladle in the hot stock and stir for about 20 to 30 minutes until it goes nice and soft and all the moisture evaporates. You want to evaporate it a little bit more than you would usually for a risotto because you're going to be rolling them up into um, balls with the rest of the food. So for the arancini mix, I'll probably go uh, three parts rice to one part smoked fish, and then I'll add my seasonings. Start off with a bit of lemon zest, then chopped up some dill, salt and pepper, and just a pinch of flour to help bind it all together. Chives would be all right as well. And then roll into balls, roll in flour, egg wash, panko crumbs. Pretty straightforward. It's a lot easier if you let the mixture cool when you do this as well. moment I realized I didn't have any uh, or not enough oil to fry them so I thought I'd use the air fryer so I put up to 200 for probably about 10-12 minutes I think it was just sprayed it with a little bit of uh, oil I'm gonna serve it with some pickled veg I made earlier in the day so I've got some pickled red onion and pickled cucumber So after about 10 minutes, I served that with some sour cream and the pickled veg. It was glorious. It worked really well in the air fryer. I hadn't have thought to do it that way. Um, usually I just fry it in some canola oil. Delicious. For more Taylor and beach fishing videos, please subscribe. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments section.